On this episode of Inside Boxing Live, we break down what is a wild weekend of boxing. We have three different cards going off. We got Showtime, The Zone, uh, Top Rank. You got Shakur Stevenson in action. You got Sebastian Fundora in action. You have the 2022 Fighter of the Year. And for some people, uh, Bam Rodriguez in action and a lot of really good undercards. And maybe, possibly, we're getting Spence Crawford, but don't hold your breath. Let's go. What is up, everybody? Welcome into another episode of Inside Boxing Live, episode 221. This is a product of John Boy Media. I am your host, Dan Kenobi. I'm joined every single week by the former WBO 140-pound champion, current full-time boxing pundit. Just came off the set of Pro Box. This guy loves talking boxing. He probably talked boxing in his sleep. Hello, Chris. I mean, I've been dreaming boxing in my sleep since I was about nine years old, so makes sense that i'm now talking in my sleep yeah man how's everything going how's uh where are you tampa yeah tampa this week uh everything's good well the joshua fight on saturday with uh, my boy todd grisham which we spoke about and then mm-hmm. uh yeah i got san antonio this weekend for for bam traveling man yeah headed out on friday and it's kind of uh, cool when you can get so much done in florida yeah 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 i mean um I mean, it's, it, since the pandemic, Florida has been kind of like a lot's been happening here. And fight sports is really like we were the first ones to open up. Like UFC yes. came down here first in Jacksonville. So, yeah. The, the, yeah I call it the United County, the, the free United Counties of South Florida. I'm jealous because I feel like there hasn't been a lot of big fights in New York with Barclays. That deal with PBC have with Barclays, I feel like it's gone, evaporated. Because we yeah. were getting like one mm-hmm. every two months at least at PBC events yeah. at Barclays. That's gone because I think the guy that was running the Barclays Center, Yarmark, one of the twins, is no longer there, and he's a right. big boxing fan. So a lot of the fights are leaving. They're going to Texas. They're going to Florida, which is good for fans uh, outside of New York that can see see big fights. There is a fight this weekend in New Jersey over at Prudential Center, Shakur Stevenson. He should fill up that uh, arena pretty well. Um, it's a lot to get to. Uh, this, is a, this is a very, very busy weekend in boxing. Before we get to our uh, breakdowns of some of the fights, Spence Crawford, <laughs> did you see this? Uh, Ring Magazine put out a uh, report that the fight is happening June 17th. And it's funny because boxing fans are so numb, like me included, Optim- Optimist and Dan, whatever, uh, whatever you call me. Um, I was like, nope, my phone for it. <laughs> not, not getting me. Not getting me. Like I put my neck out there way too many times. November 19th, I was told that was th- when the fight was going to happen by a very good source and Crawford went rogue. I'm not believing this. And I know you're not either. Or maybe yeah. you are. No. No, I'm not. I'm not. Um, I, I mean, I, I've, I've been speaking about it with everybody over here at Pro Box. And yeah, I mean, even even Crawford himself, he's tweeting, ah, it's April Fool's, which, you know, that, that was. That was annoying. Week. But yeah. Um, you know, he likes to play with our emotions. Like, you know, he says he's going to jump up to middleweight at one point. You know, he's, he's, he's a character. He likes to he likes to mess with us. So, but I don't know. I mean, I'm 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 not holding my breath. Yeah, me neither. Uh, June seventeenth, it, it was supposed to. The report from Anson Wainwright says that uh, it, the fight's going to be announced at uh, Davis Garcia, uh, April twenty second. Um, I'm hoping they wouldn't just plant that to get some more excitement around uh, Davis and and um, Garcia, which I don't really think I mean, needs that because that's a pretty big fight uh, on its own. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of reports out there from reporters that I respect. Not saying I don't respect Anson Wainwright, but you know Dan Rayfield is saying no, not happening June seventeenth. Mike Coppinger hasn't said a single word. Chris Mannix says that they are still talking the camps, and um, I've heard that Keith Th- Thurman has been told to look for for other fights, and Alexis Rocha is planning for other fights. So that's good. So that maybe good. it does happen. Maybe this just doesn't happen June seventeenth. Like I wouldn't be shocked if Crawford takes a, a, a some type of fight beforehand so does spence spence hasn't fought since last april april 2022 uh crawford you know fights once a year now too i mean we talked about this so many so many times in the past like do we want them to f- just fight right away or do we want them to get tune-up fights which could potentially make the fight not happen but at least the, the product might be better because they won't have such a ring rust yeah, I, I want them to have fights in between, honestly. I think I think uh I don't like to have guys who are inactive go right into mega fights with each other. They're both inactive. It's not like 
you know, it's not like one guy is and the other guy isn't. Um, so at least it'll be fair in that sense. But I just think it just it just stirs everything up better for for the fans and the marketing if, if they have a fight and a win going into the fight. Like the old school, old cool days. They, they're like, send them, put them on the same card. Send them, you know, send, them, send one to the other fight while they, you know, they fight and sit ringside and be, be in the background. Like that's, you know, that's... That makes too much sense, Chris. Feel like. Yeah, 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 exactly, exactly. I mean, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I mean, we, we've done this forever, but now... Nothing works anymore. So, I mean, if we waited this long, and uh, you might as well wait a little bit longer. I don't know if they went right into it next, and it was like sometime in the summer or fall. Obviously, we're we're gonna watch, and I'm gonna be excited about. It. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm not. I would not be excited about this fight if it gets made. But this is like what they. This is how you know boxing fans were treated. They could dangle fights like this. They could you know could have Crawford have this total disregard for fans' emotions by tweeting out April Fools and just messing with us because he knows. When push comes to shove, when the fight gets made, you know, we're all going to be watching. Um, I, yep. I will say that it might drive more you and people I included. To, I, of course. But like if you, it might drive more people to illegally stream it. Uh, that's that's not, not a discussion I want to go too far into. But, you know, like I feel like with Davis and Garcia, I know a lot of people have said I'm buying that fight. Like I want to support that fight because they're two young guys putting it on the line. And and I don't, I don't want to deal with uh, all that, even though it is a lot of money. But. That's the latest uh, headlines in the sport. Spence Crawford rumored for for June seventeenth. Um, I don't know who knows at this point. Uh, let's get into our fight preview. So what I decided to do, we got three main events this weekend. We got Showtime in action, the Zone, which will be on the call uh, in San Antonio, and then we got uh, ESPN over in Prudential Center with uh, Shakur Stevenson. Put out a poll on Twitter asking everyone which card they are most excited for, and the Shakur Stevenson one. Uh, let's see. 38% said Stevenson. Oh, actually, it was a tie. Hmm. Um, no, 38.3 said Stevenson. 38% said Bam and Gonzalez. Two really wow. good cards. So, according to that, we'll start with um, Shakur Stevenson. And what I want to do here, where are my notes? Um, we're going to break it up into four categories for these main events. Why you should watch. One burning question. Prediction and what would be next. Uh, for the winner and with Shakur Stevenson it's pretty easy why you should watch right he's amazing uh he's one yeah. of the best talents in the sport it's his first fight at lightweight um listen to this 19 pro fights Stevenson has outlanded his opponents 1915 to 636 uh it's a three to one ratio he's fought 127 career rounds and he's only been outlanded three rounds out of 127 career rounds and like, I don't want to say he doesn't have, I don't want to hear he has a bad resume, man. He fought Oscar Valdez. He fought um, Jamel Herring. He's fought Jamel Joe Gonzalez. Like he's got a pretty good resume. If you take a, a look at it, uh, that's the reason why you should watch. Tell us why you should watch Stevenson Yoshino. Because I, I literally think Shakur Stevenson is the future of the sport. I think he's going to be one of the best fighters in multiple general and multiple weight classes for uh, a, a decade or more to go. I mean, the guy is super young, he's super talented. He doesn't get taken any damage. And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, wow, his fights are boring. I can't stop that. It, it, it's the sweet science. Hit and don't be hit. He does that well. I don't think his fights are boring at all. I mean, he's definitely a stylist. You need to be able to pay attention. He's a technical fighter. But he does things in that ring. And he steps up when he needs to. When he mm -hmm. fights the guys that, you know, you 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 know expect to give him trouble, he, he's even better. So, I don't know. I, 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 I am very, very bullish on, on Shakur Stevenson. So, that's why you should tune in. I 100% agree with you. I'm also bullish on him. I think he's a pound for pound number one type of fighter in the making. Just has to mm -hmm. get the fights. Hasn't really gotten the fights yet. He did get the Valdez fight. You know, I've said this about Stevenson in the past, and it's not his own fault. Like, doesn't have that clear rival. You know, like, you know, like uh, Ryan Garcia and Gervonta were circling each other for 45 years. Four, 45. It seems like 45, but four to five years where everyone is asked, you know, that fighter is being asked about it and vice versa. Um, you need a rival. You need a dance partner in the sport. You need, you need that that natural guy, and he doesn't have that yet. He'll probably have it at 135, which his fight is at. Uh, it's his first fight at 135. He struggled with the weight, obviously, at 130. He had to re uh, relinquish his belts. And also, I wouldn't say struggle down the, the stretch against Kinsesa, but didn't stop Kinsesa. Many were looking for the stoppage. We talked about this after the fight, that some guys, you've said this pretty well, like some guys, like being a knockout puncher is, is a, can you say it's more of a... My Mindset, mindset right yeah more, more of a mindset and approach than actually just being able to hit hard because he could have stopped Kinsey out that night i mean he was he was building towards that and kind of let you know pulled off the gas a little bit 
and not for anything that can say so did it was just it maybe it could have been conditioning because of the weight like you said but maybe it's just the mindset that he just doesn't have that 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 mindset or that gear to to put your nose on the line late in the fight to get to get the stoppage but no he's, he's physically strong he's big I think he's gonna be big for 35 too I don't think it's gonna be like you know a, a boy versus a man in there at all um so yeah and I think this is a good move for him and I again I think we're gonna see him at 40 and 47 um I, I he's that good he tried to get fights with uh William Zapata Zapata turned it down Isak Cruz turned it down George Cambosos really? turned it down well, that makes sense. Isak Cruz, though, that's a fight. I like, that, I, that, I guy, like that. I mean, I love Isak Cruz, the fighter. I, him as his business team is just like they think he's like Floyd Mayweather and and Oscar De Oya, you know, combined. Like they're they're managing him like he's this megastar because he went the distance with Javante Davis. You don't see the guy <laughs> yeah. fight. Like when's the last time he's fought? Uh, Javante Davis with a broken hand, by the way. Yeah, it's like okay, like we like you. You know, you're you're a fun, ferocious fighter. And you got the Mexican blood, so a lot you got a huge fan base behind you. Not saying that, but they pricing him out of fights, and you know, hit that whole saga he had with Ryan Garcia. It's like, dude, get in the ring with some big names while while there's still some heat on you. Um, yeah, you gotta fight. You gotta fight. I guess what you got like that. That's fight. something you did beautifully in your career. It's like when there, there was heat on you after you beat um, Provodnikov. You had a lot of fights out there. So you took Pacquiao, then you took Khan, then you took Kel Brook. I'm uh, not Kel Brook. Uh, Errol Spence. Like you gotta, you have a small window. You got to go after it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, opportunities don't arise like that often in this sport. And, and I say that all the time to these young guys, like, you're passing up these opportunities when they're right in front of you. And depending on who you are, and Isaac Cruz is not one of those guys who's been built from, from the ground up, um, you know, to be here, like you got those opportunities may pass you by. And on top of that, a guy in his style, they don't last that long. So you got to take advantage of what you got in front of you now. Yeah, good point. Like that come fo- forward type of style, like, you know, fit 40, 50, 60 punches around. Um, yeah, so Stevenson, it's not like he didn't try. Um, so shout out to uh, Shuishiro Yoshino, who's going to be behind the eight ball from the start, like first fight in the U.S., uh, going up against a uh, a guy that uh, can barely be touched. Uh, Yoshino definitely deserved it. Um, he beat uh, Masayuki Ito, and then he beat uh, yep. Nakatani. Um Throw seventy two punches. Nakatani. Yeah, knocked out Nakatani is tough, man. Um, yeah, very tough. You know, maybe a little past it, but he did give issues uh, to Yofimo, and uh, he was in a fun fight with Lomachenko. Like he's been in there with some some good names, but in those two wins, um, Yoshino has thrown seventy two punches around, thirty jabs around. Tall guy. Um, I'm gonna be. I'll be shocked if Stevenson can stop him. That's. I think that's the burning question, right? Like we have one burning question for every fight here. So for me, the burning question is. How will the power translate 135, and how will Stevenson perform as a full-fledged 135 pounder fighting other 135 pounders? The question for me is, what is going to be the fans' reaction when he doesn't stop him and he tunes this guy up for 12 rounds? And it's, I think he's gonna, it's going to be a clean sweep. I called the fight with Masayuko Ito and Yoshino, and uh, Ito, Ito's a good fighter, but really not made for 35. And that was really the difference in that fight. Cause he was very much in that fight, got his nose broken early, was bleeding all over the place, but was landing good tricky shots on Yoshino throughout. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was just really the, the size and the pressure of Yoshino that really won him the day in that fight. But um, yeah, I just, I don't, I don't see him do anything. He doesn't do anything better than Oscar Valdez. I'll put you that way. I put it that way. And he's less explosive. So uh, the only, the only chance he has of that Shakur is just going to be like, like I said, man versus boy. And he got a real 35 pounder in there. He's gonna be physically strong, but I don't see that either. So yeah, it's gonna be a very pro Stevenson crowd. Obviously, it's in Newark, it's his hometown. Um, I like Stevenson on points. Obviously, I think you do too. Mm-hmm. Same. Same Unanimous yeah. decision. Um, will he get outlanded in any round? No. Okay. So no it goes on. It goes on to another add another 12 rounds onto that. So it would be three rounds in 139 rounds. So I'm good at math. Uh, well, you know what's next? What's next for Shakur? Should he win, Chris? Uh, I think they should revisit Cambosos. You know, top rank. I'm pretty sure he's still with top rank or with Debella. That whole you know situation. Um, I like that fight. I predicted that a while back. I was like, oh, Cambosos may not want to take that because he might want to get in a win calm. And I'm pretty sure he's coming back uh, for a tune-up fight. I forget where and who, but um. Why not take another payday? Like I'm sure Top Rank will pay handsomely for Cambosos to step in there with uh, Shakur next. 
I think we may see – I'm going to go to a bold one. We may see Shakur and Lomachenko next. Win or lose? If Lomachenko beats Haney, which I don't think he will, he Haney's going to move up to, 40, to 140. Belts are going to go back out there, and then we're going to have – uh, Lomachenko and, and and Shakur probably this year and if Haney, I mean if, if Lomachenko beats Haney, I still think Haney's going to move up. He's going to say, you know what wait, I lost because of the weight let's, let's not stay here any longer and I'll move up and then you got Shakur fighting for all the belts against <laughs> against Lomachenko so it might not happen right away next but I, I see that down the line pretty soon that would be something, huh? I mean, that takes a lot of thinking and like mental gymnastics, real quick. I'm trying to think about okay, who who's fighting who. Um, yeah, I could see Haney beats Loma and he he relinquishes all the belts, goes to 140. Yeah. That leaves a, and that would top ranks probably really rooting for that because Stevenson then can Absolutely. wiggle his way in. Lomachenko at that point, it depends on how Lomachenko loses to Haney. I think it's going to be a close fight mm-hmm. no matter what, where he's not yeah. too damaged and his reputation isn't too damaged. Uh, but Stevenson Lomachenko, I, I would sign up for that. I mean, that's one of the title yeah. fights. I mean, that would be very, very fun. I think that's what Shakur wants. He's making making it no secret that he wants a, a Lomachenko, and um, that would be awesome. Like uh, it's time to see Loma. Uh, excuse me, it's time to see uh, Shakur in some of these bigger fights and win or lose. Lomachenko is one of those names. Obviously, I would love to see him against Haney at one thirty five. That's like your ultimate yeah, technical I mean, matchup. I don't see that fight happening. I don't see that for those guys fighting at least for a long time, but it could happen down the line and it's probably up in, you know, in the forties when it, when it does happen, but yeah, I don't see that anytime soon. All right, let's go over. Um, we'll get to the, the undercard too at the end. Let's go over to our other second main event. Um, Bam Rodriguez, Christian Gonzalez. This is over in San Antonio, Texas. Uh, you should watch this fight because it's Bam Rodriguez. He's another great outstanding talent in the sport. Um, he was probably finished second in fighter of the year behind Bivol last year fought three times last year and now he's fighting at 112 uh, and this is for a vacant wbo flyweight title going up against christian gonzalez uh gonzalez is rated number two by the wbo is on a nine fight win streak tall five foot seven uh he's gonna be much taller than bam rodriguez in there i mean this you really don't have to sell this one too hard i mean whatever bam fights i'm watching absolutely bam was one b for a fighter of the year last year in, in my book so he's uh you know he's 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 an awesome fighter really Really, really talented young guy. Puts on exciting fights, too. And again, you got this guy in front of him who's also young and hungry and, you know, he's tall. And the kid, the kid fights. He's talented. I watch, I watch some of his tape. So um, I think, you know, it's, I, I think it's, there's no reason not to. It's Bam, like you said. <clears throat> How will Bam look at 112? Uh, I think this is his natural weight, right? Do you agree? Yeah. So this is definitely much more of his natural weight. Um, but yeah, how is he going to look? How is how is getting back down after spending a year above and 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 whatnot? Um, I don't know. I I think that I think he's going to be fine. He's young, you know. He's not like it's not like he's in his thirties moving back down to weight. And he's 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 a young guy. Um, but I'm just not sure the power is going to be the same. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes the distance in this fight. Um, because you know going down isn't necessarily everyone always thinks oh well you're going down you're going to be stronger well you're not actually going to be stronger the guys are going to be a little bit smaller but I think this kid's younger and hungry enough that he'll he'll stay in there. That's crazy um because I, I I think not crazy but I think Bam TKO late I think he like we've seen in some of his other fights last year and maybe not like that one punch power but man with the angles and those punches you can't see coming yeah and he's just his angles too much. are awesome. What's that? His angles are awesome. The way there's that one angles. clip of him, like the highlight where was it against Quadras, where he slides, yes. slips back, lands a shot, and yep. knocks him down. That's one of the cleanest highlights. Like that's up there with like a Roy Jones type of highlight reel. Yeah, I mean that that was that was the, the fight that like really showed the world who he was, and and he knew that that was his coming out party. Um, and then to be able to do those kind of moves at such a high level, forget it. Yeah, this guy's the Start real right deal. There. Um, I like him TKO late. Um, what are the odds right now? Uh, I'll have a, a parlay out. I've been red hot with my Yankee picks. Um, they got me hosting this Yankee pregame show for talking Yanks on the jam network. And I, we have to make picks before and drafts and all this. And I'm right. I'm hard, riding a hot streak right now. And I'm, I definitely want to keep it going. Um, 
Right. Like just that. like we were talking about those young fighters, you gotta you gotta ride those hot streaks, man. You gotta take the <laughs> opportunities when they're there. Right. Just keep betting until I until my mortgage is gone and I'm living on yeah. living on the sidewalk. Uh, let's and then see. go to the and then go to the ATM and get some more and then just keep yeah. going. Yeah, I can always move back in with my mom and dad at age thirty five, right? Yeah, Come on. it's cool. It's the Long Island way. <laughs> it is the Long Island way. Uh, where is this <laughs> fight? Jesse Rodriguez. It's weird when you see his name is Jesse Rodriguez. I forget that his name is Jesse. Right, you ever call him by yeah. Jesse? Uh, no, no. It's Bam. It's a great name. It's one of the better Bam. nicknames in the sport. Um, Bam by KO minus one forty five. Bam by decision plus one twenty. Over under is set at nine and a half. Hmm. Mm. Mm. I will take a. Late. I will take a deeper look at that. Stevenson is a minus sixteen hundred favorite over under. Under ten and a half, two plus two thirty. Stevenson. Let's see Stevenson by knockout plus two twenty. If he's gonna get it, it's gonna be a stop. It's gonna be a late stoppage for Stevenson. Um, and then Fundora minus eleven hundred. I mean, these are some big odds. Um, what's next for Bam? Should he win? Uh, you see this, Sonny Edwards just signed with Matro. Yep. That's huge. Huge, huge. And that's Sonny Edwards, Bam Rodriguez. Yeah. Sonny Edwards, Bam Rodriguez is a huge fight for two little guys uh, at 112. That's pretty much why Matro signed Edwards. Edwards is a really good talent, but he's been kind of hidden, fighting all these strange platforms, and who knows who he's, money he was taking for a while. But now he's with Eddie Hearn. Um, love this. I think they'll build towards that. I don't know if it's next, but I think they will build towards a Bam Rodriguez, Sonny Edwards fight at 112 uh, unification. Yeah, totally makes sense. Um, I'm sure both guys want that fight. All the little guys always want to fight. They want to make that money. They want to get out there. So that perfect bread. fight. Makes sense. I agree. Um, let me that see what's bread. going on at, at flyweight. Um, Sonny Edwards, IBF champion. Julio Cesar Martinez, WBC. Mm, champ. Love that fight, too. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's with Matchroom, right, or some capacity. Yeah. Um, if you can make Artem Dalakanian is the WBA champ. Uh, McWilliams Arroyo, that guy's never gonna fight again. Um, yeah, it's it's Sonny Edwards, it's Julio Cesar Martinez, and it's Bam Rodriguez. Those are the three guys at flyweight <clears throat> that we want to see fight each other. And that's the thing with these lower weights; they do fight each other. You're most likely gonna see those guys get in the ring. Um, so that's what's going on in I'm, San Antonio. I, could, I see them all fighting each other. I think that all they'll they'll go round robin. I mean, why not? They're all in the same same place again. Yeah. If Martinez can make weight, but let's see if Gonzalez can can give Bam some rounds. Like we, I liked what I saw from Bam. Obviously, the first two fights of his twenty twenty two Quadras and the Rungvasai wins, but the last fight, Israel Gonzalez um pushed him pushed him to the to he, he was in control, but man, he took punishment. It's a big reason why he didn't fight again. Uh, to end the year, so we'll see if this five foot seven Gonzalez can push it, and maybe I will take the over in this one. But also, I think Bam's gonna win TKO late. Um, get, yeah, you, what's your prediction? I got decision. I think Bam is gonna. I think Bam's gonna, gonna run, away, run away with it in a, a last half of the fight. But I think the kid's gonna be in there tough in the beginning, and I know Bam does get hit sometimes. So, um, but I think. Bam's class is going to show, especially as the fight wears on. And I just, like I said, I think the kid is young and hungry enough to to get by. Our final main event. Uh, <laughs> this is over on Showtime. The Towering Inferno, Sebastian Fundora. We have some fun nicknames this weekend. We have some fun. These are three young fighters in our, in our main events this weekend. It just happens to be there on three different platforms. Uh, but that's the nature of the sport. Uh, Bam Rodriguez, Shakur Stevenson, and Sebastian Fundora, all under 25 years old. Uh, 25 or under. Uh, Fandora's taking on uh, Brian Mendoza. The reason you should watch this one because Sebastian Fandora is seven foot twelve and he weighs 41 pounds. <laughs> the exaggeration is excellent. I, I really honestly, I interviewed him and and I honestly just did something where I hate what other people do is where they legitimately only look at him as like this freak show that can fight and he hates it. So I apologize to Sebastian Fandora for that. He's six foot six and he's 154 pounds yeah which is you know he's freakishly tall i hate using that word too but um yeah but but he can fight he can really fight and he likes to fight on the inside he's not like a long range guy who wants to like you know stay stay on the outside he he he, he wants to get inside and bang and he's a good body puncher he's got great uppercuts yeah he's a he's a fun watch 
he proved in the Lubin fight that he could that he's more than like just like hey look at this guy he's so tall and so skinny he proved his worth in that Lubin fight yeah. big time what a, and, what a performance oh my god and and now he's just waiting um like a lot of 154 huh? I don't know if you saw this uh Charlo Zoo is not going to be next because uh Charlo's hand is not healing as fast as he thought it would uh, I think they told. Uh, we spoke about that. Remember, we said about hands. Hands take time. I learn a lot from time. you. Andrew. You never know. Learn a yeah, lot from I mean, your hands. I never punched anyone ever. Really? I uh, maybe. I gotta think harder. I went to West Virginia to, University. So how many? How many Yankee? How many Yankee games you been to? You never punched anybody? Come no, on. I'm a pretty good fan. I, I, don't, <laughs> I usually like will watch and videotape it so I can post it and um, get the likes. You're not. You're not a hooligan. You're not a hooligan, though. No, I was always like my role was always I would instigate fights, and then I always, mm. you know, my boys were bigger than me. I'm not the biggest guy, and then they would they, the fights would start, and I'd just be like, oh shit, what did I start? The you mouth slide out the back like oh, yeah. doo, doo, doo. I'm the mouth. I'm the mouth, <laughs> and then bring in the muscle. Um. Yeah, so that was that was growing up. Uh, Fundora, love this guy. Love watching him fight. Um, he says that he's trying to become more of a, a boxer and use that really long reach. Like he has the reach advantage over everyone at one fifty four, but yeah. loves to fight on the inside. It's so strange to watch. It works for him. I've asked him about it, and he said, "I just like to fight on the inside. I like to bang. I like it." Again, someone's okay. gonna cut that. Okay. Someone's gonna cut that. Someone's gonna cut that snippet out. But he likes to bang. He's a banger, and he's gonna probably do that with Mendoza. He he always says he goes into every fight. I'm gonna throw my jab, and I'm gonna like you know box behind my jab, and then he ends up in a phone booth. Yeah, I mean it's 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 that old saying. I I I went to a, a boxing match and it turned into a you know a brawl, and that's just, mm-hmm. that's just what it is. I mean, he just he 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 doesn't really have another speed, and that, you know. And that could be his discipline. That could be just he's not that good at at, at boxing as he is punching, and and he doesn't or just or just his mentality. But either way, I mean, if he wants to have a a, a long and healthy career, he's got to use that length. Why not? Have to, it's I don't even know his reach off the top of my head, but yeah, he has an, a ridiculous reach. I think it's um, eighty plus. It's, it's got to be, be over plus. eighty, and yeah, I think he lands like Which two jabs nice. around. Like it's like one of those where ninety percent of his landed punches are power shots. Makes for really fun fights, <clears throat> but longevity, like who knows with this guy? Because he's every fight he's in, it becomes like a a dog fight, and. That's my burning question for this fight is can Fundora separate himself from an inferior opponent? Um, he's better than Brian Mendoza. Like he should be able to win this yeah. fight uh going away. So but is he gonna allow Mendoza to get on the inside and, and there are they gonna just sit there and, and brawl in the center of the ring, which is fun for us, but not for the longevity of Sebastian Fundora. Yeah, I, I think you know, even though Mendoza is not as talented, you know, he's a physically strong guy, but I would I would like to see Fundora use that length, maybe you know, break up Mendoza a little bit early on. And then afterwards, you know, or later in the rounds, turn into a brawl and try and get him out of there. But he shouldn't go right at this, this guy, everyone, everyone hits hard in the first couple of rounds. So might as well use your jab. Cause you got it. Yeah. Let's see. Um, Fundora make a statement. That'd be nice. Uh, I like Fundora on points. Um, I think he'll, he'll, he'll turn into one of these home booth types of fights. Maybe he has moments where he's such a jab more cause he really is reiterating that, um, in the lead up for this fight, uh, as for what's next for him, should Fundora g- get the win? Um, how about a, a fight with Brian Castagna? Haven't heard much mm, about Brian Castagna in a while. Um, so fight. Charlo losses or yeah, the draw, then the Charlo loss. Um, not sure what he's up to these days, but still top five at 154, in my opinion. Fundora's top five, I think Fundora's third. I have pretty sure everyone has Zoo. Or maybe Fundora in front of Zoo and Charlo number one. Castano's in the top five, so I would like to see Fundora Castano. If Castano doesn't want that fight, then maybe Charles Conwell. And he's a pretty tough guy, mm. 154. Those are some of the bigger names. There are other guys ahead of Conwell, I think, in the pecking order. But a Fundora Castano fight would be explosive. That would be fireworks. I- I love that fight, and but listen, Fundora better work on his boxing before that one, <laughs> because Castano is in your face, and he throws combinations. He is a rough cat, and uh, yeah, yeah, you don't want to fight that guy in a phone booth, even if you're Fundora. Wow, uh, so I I love that main event over on, on Showtime. Some fun fights this weekend. Uh, the undercards are fun too. Jared Anderson is in action, taking on George Arias. Oh, Jared. 
George Arias is a, a local New York guy, probably called five or six of his fights for Broadway boxing. He looks like Mike. I think they call him the Dominican Mike Tyson. Um, doesn't really fight like Mike Tyson, but he's short, <laughs> stocky, uh, heavyweight, and uh, has good movement. Who did he upset? He beats um Cassius Cheney. Do you remember that? You know that guy? Yeah, no, Cassius actually, actually uh, is down. Was down here in Florida. I was hanging out with him a little bit. He went to yeah. the gym a few times. Arias um upset him on Triller sometime last year. Uh, so he's now put into the ring with. Jared Anderson, who was a beast. I mean, Jared Anderson's the guy. Yeah. He's our guy. I mean, this is a guy. This is your worth not giving in you to no the favors. Next... Yeah, right? Congrats, George. You had a big upset. Uh, here's Jared Anderson, who is taking guys out left and right. Guys that we thought would get, go rounds, like in his last fight. Um, Jared Anderson is the reason you watch this fight is to watch the next great American heavyweight. Yeah, exactly. He is an absolute destroyer. And top rank doing what top rank does, they move their prospects perfectly. And you know this is a this is a step up, a big step up, um, but nothing I don't think Jared Anderson can handle. I was asked a question on social media. Do you think Jared Anderson could beat Anthony Joshua right now? Uh, it's easy to to uh, no. I'm gonna say no. I think he has no the talent too. To. Yeah, I would say he has the talent too, for sure. But he's seen no nowhere near. Listen, Anthony Joshua is still a top tier heavyweight. He's just not exactly what he used to be. And yeah, no way. I don't, I, that's it's too much too soon. There's there, there's a lot of gaps and a lot of a lot of leaps you'd have to make for that. Yeah, it just shows like the the, the nature of like social media, and it's like like it's yeah. like a snowball piling. And all the takes mm-hmm. pile up, pile up, pile up. So it's a big giant snowball. And all those takes were that like Joshua didn't fight well, this, that, and the other, uh, but he still can box and he's still I would say top five heavyweight. Um Anderson will get there though. Like how long do you think before Anderson is in there with like the top guys? Like how fast will top rank move this guy? I think they're gonna pump the brakes on him a little bit, let him develop a little more. Cause it's one of those things, heavyweights, you gotta be undefeated. Um, you can't risk catching a loss on there, and, and he needs to be tested too. You can't you can't just blow everybody out the way he's been doing it, and then just jump into a big fight like an Anthony Joshua or some some you know along those lines. So uh, Top Rank's smart. They don't they don't they rush guys, but they rush the guys because they're they are the goods. But at the same time, they like to pump the brakes and make sure that their investment is is going to come to fruition. And they need this. This is the next big thing in the heavyweight division. He's American. Uh, he's brash. He's bold. Uh, he's got a great personality. Uh, he's the neck. He's next in the heavyweight division. He's highlight real knockouts for Jerry, uh, for uh, highlight real knockouts for uh, Mr. Anderson and uh, and that last fight with Jerry Forrest, who I uh, I thought would was going to give Anderson some rounds. I mean, Forrest fought like had the worst game plan ever, uh, standing and trading with Anderson. But Anderson took massive shots in that in that fight. Like he's willing to take one, and we talked about this afterwards. Like. Not really the best plan when coming up, like don't take punishment if you don't have to in heavyweight division. But I think Anderson's like frigate. I want to highlight real knockout. I'm going, I'm going to stand in the pocket and trade. So I've heard about stories about him in the gym and he's got like phenomenal head movement and defense. And then on fight night, I've been watching him get hit by journeyman his whole career, like hard. And I'm mm-hmm. always like, uh, I don't like that for any young fighter. I really don't like that for heavyweights. I don't care how good you are. Everybody's everybody's chin at heavyweight is is suspect <laughs> because sure. the guys are just they're just too big and they hit too hard. It only takes one punch. Right. Um, so uh, you know maybe as hopefully as the competition steps up, he starts to be minding his p's and q's a little more, and he's taking the risk now, like he said, because so he can get these highlights and get these knockouts. But yeah, that's that's you can't do that forever. Keyshawn Davis is also in action. I love when Top Rank does this. They'll put Shakur, they'll put Keyshawn Davis, uh, they'll put Jared Anderson on the scene card. I've done this numerous times. Um, find Anthony Yidget, who uh, most famously got knocked out by Roly Romero. I expect Keyshawn uh, to get another highlight real stoppage. Uh, he's been uh, chirping at Frank Martin uh, over in the PVC. I feel like that's like the next fight they're all, you know, it's always like, it's like a cycle. Um, Pac met me with a Pacquiao, turned into uh the four king, the four baby kings, and haven't really seen them fight too much. And Spence Crawford came around, and Virgil Ortiz versus Boots. I see Keyshawn Davis and Frank Martin using each other's names for clout, as the kids say. Um, not mad about it. Uh, Keyshawn is on a rocket ship, I feel like, as well, uh, with that all that Olympic success. 
really like this kid. I met him a few times. He's got a good hand on his shoulders. Calls himself the businessman. Yeah, great kid. Uh, him and his brothers really, really, uh, really good guys. Uh, super dudes. talented. Yeah, super, super talented. Um, I'm very high. I'm very bullish on, on Keyshawn Davis, too. Um, but I, I want to see him develop more. This is a good step up fight with Yijit. He's he's been in with some former world champions and he's uh he's okay, you know, but it's uh it's a good it's a good step up fight for 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 Keyshawn. Nice. That's a good one. That's the ESPN over on uh the zone undercard. Uh MJ Akmadalia, remember him? <laughs> this guy has two belts mm-hmm. at 122. He was supposed to be fighting Fulton. Um, that was the fight everyone wanted to see, but uh hand injury. Only has fought three times since February 2020 when he beat Danny Roman, um, fighting Marlon Topalis, uh, who's a former champ, got a deliberate style. Topalis, uh, Aquadaliov's really good, but coming off a crazy layoff. Um, I'd like to see Aquadaliov active because he can get potentially get the winner of Fulton in a way. He's a stud. He's I'm I'm a big fan. He's a he's he's fun to watch. He can he can he can really fight. Uh, I hope that hand is good. If that hand's good, I, I see him getting the stoppage. If if that hand's is still an issue, which we know hands can be tricky, um, you know it'll it'll probably go to decision. But yeah, I think I I think he wins this fight straight away. I mean he's he's I think he's a really really good fighter. Is this on DraftKings? Uh, let's see. Um, and Mak Akhmadaliev. No, I uh, see in other names. There's so many fights on DraftKings because there's so many fights this weekend. Gabriella Fundora, uh, Sebastian's sister's fighting this weekend too. I heard so, she's good. I haven't seen her yet. No, she's good, man. She's just she's tall too. Shocker. Um, <laughs> Jeez, like, that's funny how they work. There's a bunch of uh, Fundoras. You know their his story, right? Like he built his dad built him um, a ring in their backyard. They live in Coachella. And not only did they build a ring in their backyard, they built little like houses for sparring partners to stay on the premises. It's wow. unreal, man. And a lot of times, like I'm like, dude, do you ever see the guys just leaving? Like in the middle of the night, he goes yes, because I would beat like we beat them up, and then we wake up the next day and they're no longer in their little houses we built. For them. It's like human cockfighting. Like go back into your go back into your barn. Go back to. Your- <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you told me that I was like, that is wild. Like, I've seen the ring too. It's on social media. It's so cool. Like, my dad built a wiffle ball field in my backyard. This the Fundoras built the ring, and they just breed champions. Different strokes for different folks. When you're on Long Island, you build a wiffle ball. <laughs> when you're Mexican, you build a boxing ring. <laughs> it's an awesome thing, man. But yeah, um, she's fighting. How about this? Is a weird fight. Gabriel Mastre. Remember him for the guy that yeah. was given a gift uh, win over Michael, Michael Fox. Fox. One of the most blatant cases of corruption in the history of boxing. Uh, I was fighting Devin Alexander. Oh no! Good gracious! And what, what are we weight? doing? What are we doing? Some... What? Forty-seven or fifty-four? I don't know. I haven't. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. I didn't do any research on this one. Um, yeah, and it doesn't doesn't deserve any. Devin Thanks. Alexander. If you follow him on Twitter, he's got some of the craziest takes out there. Um, and has been around for a long, long time. Long time. He fought in 2021 against Luke Santamaria, lost the unanimous decision. Fought Evan Redcatch, got knocked out. Fought Andre Berto, yeah. split decision, loss. Drew against Victor Ortiz. Hasn't won since 2017. Doesn't I'm say. It's not. <laughs> was. Um, doesn't say. It's not even on box rec. Someone else fight is a heavyweight fighting this weekend too that I was shocked to to see. Um Chris Ariola. No, Chris Ariola. Chris Ariola was really good at one point. He was really awesome, good. man. I mean he, that yeah. fight with Konaki was freaking amazing. That, that broke awesome. all sorts of heavyweight yeah. records at Compute Box. I was working that fight with my dad. And uh, it was like some of the most fun I've ever had working a Compute Box fight ringside because they were throwing insane punches. Crab mm-hmm. was really into it because Adam Konaki had bro- in, in Brooklyn. And like my dad's a freak. Obviously, he's been working comic books for forty years. He like figured it out in the fifth round. Like, all right, this is we're entering like record ter- territory. So we have mm. one minute in between rounds, and he's pulling up the, the record trend. book. He's pulling up the record book. He's getting stats ready. He's telling the truck. It was like I was in awe. I was like watching this guy. Just he was in the he was cooking. Bob Kenobi. Shout out Bob Kenobi. Watches every show. That was an awesome one. Of the more like it's not the most memorable fight, but to me, I had so much fun working that one. That was a really fun fight. 
That was an awesome fight. I was in camp with Daniel Jacobs. I don't remember who we were training for, but uh, we're, I was watching with uh, Andre, Andre Razier, and he was like screaming at the TV. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was fun for us too. We had a, we had a fun, fun watch of that fight as well. It was Rock'em Sock'em Robots, but yeah, Ariola was yeah. in there with some, some who's with him? Klitschko, we fought Wilder, Andy uh, Ruiz too, right? Andy Ruiz, yeah. He dropped it. He dropped Andy. Drop Andy Ruiz. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the weekend. Oh, Raymond Ford, Jesse Magdalena, really good one. Um, good one, good one. Don't forget Raymond that Raymond Ford is like I know Matchroom has a lot of big plans for Raymond Ford, uh, Camden, New Jersey guy. Um, what do you think? Richard Medina, a few fights back, where uh, some thought that he lost, wasn't the greatest I performance. That fight. Wasn't the best yeah, performance. He, he's been him. he's been hot and cold since since he started, and uh, but he looked fantastic in his last fight on uh, the undercard of Love and uh, Spark. He. Uh, he looked fantastic scoring a late round knockout, but was like boxing really well prior to that. Uh, but this is interesting, man. I mean, if the kid's for real, uh, well, I'll put it this way. If he beat Jesse Magdalena, we think kid is for real. And it certainly seems like he is. And, you know, Jesse was a fantastic fighter at one point. Yeah, I don't know how sure. much is left. In, and I don't know how much is left in the tank. You know, mm. he's been inactive. He hasn't had really any good wins recently. Um, but yeah, this is an interesting crossroads fight. He's 31 years old, Magdalena, former champ. Um, but Love 31 for fights. those, you know, smaller weights is, yeah. and also he's up a few weight classes. So that's what I love these types of fights where it's like, all right, man, um, you know, you're a young fighter with a lot of promise and you haven't exactly shown it yet. We'll put you in there with a, a grizzled bet and see what happens. Put up or shut up. Love that. Put up or shut up. Let's Gotta go. I love it. So, all right. So some good fights this weekend all over the globe, all over the platforms. Uh, boxing fans once again have to like choose which one they want to watch. I figure, I, I, uh, yeah, the zone. I think the zone card's the best card, top to bottom. Um, the best fighter is Stevenson fighting yeah, on ESPN, definitely. and then mm-hmm. Fondora is like he's always worth watching. Um, so it's a little something for everyone this weekend. So what's the travel plans? Uh, when are you leaving for San Antonio? I'm leaving Friday morning. Get there Friday afternoon. Got some meetings that night, fight day on Saturday. Do the river walk? And, uh, river walk is Saturday morning. I mean, we're doing a 5K. The oh, is that the Eddie Hearn 5K? That. Yeah, the 5K is Saturday can you, can morning. You dust him? And, can you, like, leave him in the dust? Yeah. I, obviously, you can, but we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, I am, yeah. <laughs> I, I figured, like, when he puts these together, he, like, leads it the charge like he's Rocky or something. Nah, dude, it's a race. <laughs> it is a race. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not jogging. I'll finish going. last if I did that. Anyway, um, hopefully, hopefully it's on the river walk. That'd be cool. So you're doing before the bell with Shackle? Yep, me and me and me and the homie. Shackle is killing it, man. He is part of the John Boy Media family. He's got a podcast with David Cohn. He's now the host of the pre post game shows on the Yankees Radio Network. He's next in line to take over for John Sterling, who's a legend here in New York. It's calling fights for the zone. That's a good team. You and Shackle is a strong team. So I, I encourage everyone to watch Before the Bell on YouTube, the Matchroom YouTube page. Those were fun. Yeah, they're fun. Justin's awesome. I love working with him. He's super prepared. He gets better every single time. Um, yeah, I mean, super professional guy. He, he's he's going places. He's already places, but he's going even higher. Yeah, I love, love the Shack man. I played Blitzball with him. Let's ball battle one. Uh, we didn't win a single game, but we had fun. Uh, let's call it. Let's call it. Let's throw the towel in on this podcast. Appreciate you taking the time uh, to tune in, everybody. Uh, this was a fun one. As always, protect yourselves at all times. Keep your hands up at all times. Stay out of those DMs. Goodbye. Goodbye.